Welcome to another edition of Dentalpreneur Secrets. I'm your host, Tim McNeely, and we help you build an amazing life of significance so you can take care of the people you love, support the causes you care about, and change the world for the better. But for you to do that well, you're going to need to build a strong and profitable business. And I am so excited today. We've got Mark Adams on the show. And by the time we finish today, you're going to know why business success, and this is going to surprise you, is <laughs> guaranteeable. Did you hear me right? Yes, I said guaranteeable. You're going to have an organization and a framework for your business to really help you master the five keys of success. But more importantly, you're going to walk away feeling excited. You're going to have a newfound confidence in building your business. And Mark, Mark is a neat guy. He's a profitability and business growth advisor. He's the owner of Next Level Business Advisors. And today, Mark is going to share with you how you can make your business dreams come true. Mark, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, Tim. Oh, man, the, the, we were chit-chatting before, and I, I am so excited about everything that you're going to share with everyone today. And so, so give us a little bit of, of a background. How, how did you get started doing what you're doing? Uh, I can give you the long story if you have six, seven hours. Or I, can give you, <laughs> I can give you the short story. You know, over, I've been in business for almost 20 years now, and I started like most business owners, you know, oh, I can do taxes. And so I started doing taxes. I think the first year I realized very quickly, it's not just about doing taxes. It's about managing a business. And so I did okay. I, I grew my business. I, I enjoy what I do. But what I realized very quickly on is that I like teaching and training and helping. And so all my clients, when we're doing taxes or bookkeeping, I kind of gotten into explaining what needs to be done. Uh, and that actually led to me saying, you know what, taxes are okay, bookkeeping is okay, but my joy is in helping other business owners have the light bulb go off and to find different ways of success. So I started training on how to coach and how to advise business owners to be profitable. So for the past few years, that's what I've been doing, spending the primary uh, focus uh, with my business owners on educating them on how they can be successful. And that's really the way I've evolved into who I am today. And because I started with numbers, my eye is always on the bottom line. Excellent. Now, now you said something interesting. You said you kind of, you know, we're helping people and helping your clients with the with the bookkeeping, the accounting piece, but but you want to help them have the light bulb go off. And and I know so often for me, I, I don't think about light bulbs going off when I'm looking at, at spreadsheets and, and numbers. So so what do you mean by that? Wait a minute, you don't get geeked. <laughs> no, no, not, not too much, man. Okay. Uh, I get geeked. I'm sorry. The light bulb, you know, it, it's when you, so many people think that accounting specifically is about getting the numbers on the paper so I can get the return done. Uh, accounting is different. It's the language of business. And that's what I learned early on. Mm. So the light bulb that I have with clients is, and it's, this is just one area, right? But it's helping them to understand why they're struggling financially. I've had so many clients say, well, I, I, it says I made this much money, but I don't feel it. Well, understanding your numbers, looking at those things are going to help you to really see where you have leaky, uh, you know, leaky pockets uh, or, or where you can improve your, your sales. I had one client I was working with in a completely different uh, vertical, right? Not the medical field, but he was a contractor. And uh, we were chatting about why he's struggling to make ends meet. And when we sat down and did an analysis of his sales and his costing, he realized that he was undercharging by like 30%. So that's killer in his business. Uh, by raising his fees uh, appropriately and yet staying within the market, he was able to turn down certain jobs because he didn't need to take every single job to make ends meet. His life got better, right? He has more time. He can be a little bit more selective because when he takes a job, he knows that it's going to make his ends meet. But that's how I get geeked, right? When I talked to him, he actually got upset, right? We, I said, so we, we ran through the numbers and uh, I said, so it looks like if I'm right, you, you, you're undercharging. He was like, I wish I knew about this two years ago, <laughs> you know, but it, it's okay. You know, business is an evolution. That's my opinion. It's guaranteeable. We talked about that success being guaranteeable, but it's an evolution. Hmm. Interesting. Well, and maybe that's why, you know, if you're listening to this, maybe that's why the light doesn't necessarily always go off for you. Because, you know, as, as business owners, as successful dentists, so often you see money coming in and you see money going out. And that's all your financial statements really tell you 
is who's making money other than you. <laughs> and so it sounds like, right, it's not just making money, but it's really about improving the profitability, the, the bottom line. And Absolutely. So what are some, some strategies and tactics? How do you help people improve their bottom line? And, and as, as dentists are looking at their practices, what are some things they can be doing to improve their bottom line? Well, that's an excellent question. Uh, you know, the, the first and foremost, which is the simplest one, uh, is to understand your numbers. Right. So obviously your numbers have to be accurately entered into an accounting system of sort, but take the time to understand your numbers, where your expenses are going. Uh, what's the percentage of cost of goods sold? How much are you spending on, you know, DMEs and things of that nature so that you can make sure that everything is lining up properly. Uh, what, you know, it's more than just numbers in building a successful business. I mean, obviously, it all boils down to that net profit, right? But it's understanding your client base. Who's my ideal client? Like what, you know, who do I really want to work with? Understanding your ideal product or service. And so when we talk about advisory and profitability and we talk about growth, yeah, we look at numbers, but we look at a lot of different things. It's, it's understanding the entire practice or the entire business and making sure that it aligns in such a way that's going to give you maximum growth and maximum profitability. Mm -hmm. Also includes workflow, right? All those things tie in. Yeah. Okay. But, but right, you know, as we're talking about that, that bookkeeping piece, what you're talking about is so fundamentally different than just entering the data and getting a static report back, right? You, you're really going into the, the role of advisory and, and looking at these statements and, and what do the numbers mean? And more importantly, how can you make better decisions with what the numbers are telling you? And, and, and right, what I find is people usually want more cash flow and, and better control of what's flowing in and out of the practice. And so, Absolutely. you know, once again, you know, how can you start implementing these things? Because it can take a lot of time to, to do this. And, and is this something us business owners should be doing? Or, or should we, you know, be asking our bookkeeper to do it? Or, or how do we find someone to help us with this? That's an excellent question. I, I tell you this, I mean, and I, I talk to business owners all the time, especially when cash is tight, everyone's looking for ways in which they can save some money. So maybe they'll do the book. That's not what you want to do as an owner. You don't want to do your own books. It's not the right task for you. The first thing that you have to do as an owner is realize where your money is being made and focus your time and your energy on that. So you outsource or delegate what you should not be doing because even though it costs you money, it's more like an investment, right? Uh, but what you should do as an owner is you need to dedicate time to understanding your financials. Well, that's a little bit different. Uh, when I'm working with clients now, you know, we don't always do the books for them. You know, I have clients who have their own bookkeeper. We sit down and we analyze together. And that's where you're going to be making these smart business decisions. Uh, so really the key for you as an owner is understanding where your value is first. What makes you profitable? It's not doing certain tasks. It's understanding how it relates to the bottom line and then making those adjustments. So yeah, it's critical that your books are on point. We can take care of that for you. We can do it ourselves in-house. In we can hire you a bookkeeper. We can train a bookkeeper. But what you have to do as an owner is understand your numbers so that you can make smart business decisions. That's how we're going to improve your bottom line. That's how we're going to have cash coming into your pocket and staying in your pocket or going out when you wanted to go out to get your new car or something like that. You know, that's what we really want to focus in on. Okay. Excellent. I, 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 right. And so often, right. When you talk about the, the business, right. There's usually a couple things you can do to improve your cash flow. You can raise your prices like the contractor you were talking about. You can also, kind of cut that bottom line and Absolutely. the expenses. But, you know, does making money actually transmit, transfer and, and equate to making more money, right? If I make more money, I'm going to make more money, right? You know, it's an interesting thing. That's what a lot of people think. In fact, if you don't mind, can I tell you a, a, a short story? Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble, but I was working with the doctor and he was actually a doctor. His wife is a doctor and he helps with the marketing and growing the business. But it, it seemed like every single year, they were losing money. Uh, I think I had met them, they were about a decade in, and every year they lost money to the tune of almost a, a million dollars. They had basically loaned the business from his personal money. Um, and the ironic part about it is that his sales were going up and up and up and up. So you say, well, how is that possible? Why is he losing every single year? It seems like every dollar he made, 
he reinvested it, if that's the right term, in advertising. So as his sales goes up, his advertising goes up. Hmm. So you know the first thing we talked about, right? Why are you spending so much money on sales? And we did an analysis where we looked at his customer base and we realized that a lot of his business, as is most people who are very good at business, is repeat business. So if we can cut your advertising cost, and we cut it by about 80% and just focus on working with the clients you already have, would you immediately make more money, your bottom line? Absolutely, it would improve. And that's what we did. And we, we took some of that money that he had for advertising, we allocated it to payroll for himself so that he didn't have to keep this cyclical thing of borrowing money back and forth to the company. And within a year, we turned him from net losses to about a $100,000 gain. That, that you talk about light bulb and eye opening and, and, and that, you know, I get really, I relish in other people's success. You know, I want to see everybody, I want to be successful. I want everybody who works for me to be successful. And so it's a mindset shift. Even now, you know, we've hit COVID, uh, his sales are down. And the first thing he thinks is, man, I got to, I got to increase sales. I got to increase sales. Maybe I should throw money at marketing. And I'm telling him, hold your horses. You know, we, we went down that path before. Let's take incremental steps to see what we can do so that you can stay financially solvent. Wow, what, what a powerful story to, to go from a decade of losses to all of a sudden gains simply by doing what you're talking about, understanding your numbers and the story that they're telling. Wow, that, that's so powerful, Mark. Thank you for sharing that story with us. And, and, and you really are, right? You mentioned that education piece and you are an educator at heart. And in fact, you've got a, a fantastic ebook that you've put together, what Mastering the Five Keys Every Business Owner Must Know to make your business successful. Can you walk us through a little bit of that, that book and, and some of those keys that we have to master? Sure, you know, I, I have created that book uh, based on a lot of different things. I've worked with so many different business owners and you know, I, I talk to a lot and those who are successful, they all seem to have like these commonalities. And so I'm starting to try to compile that and say, man, what have I learned from working with all these different business owners and how can I distill it in a way that gives you at least a high level view. And so I, I said, you know, I think there are five keys to business uh, success. There might be 12 or 15 or 31, who knows, but I know five really matter. And so I, I wanted to write about it. And the first key is what well, one of the keys I should say, I'm not gonna say the first, is knowing your numbers, right? Understanding things like how much I should charge, what I should spend money on, when should I spend money? So that's one of the most important keys that you can have. You know, cash is king, right? But really cash flow is even more important than, than just having cash. It's not just having the money, it's about how you manage it. One of the other keys that I talk about in my uh, ebook is, knowing your customer, right? I, I used to say, you know, a jack of all trades is a master of none. And so in business, if you want to be a jack of all trade, you're not going to really get any mastery of anything. And the challenge with that is there are riches and niches. You've probably heard that expression before. I mean, everybody's, you know, it's funny, not everyone has, but riches and niches. And what that really means is that you specialize. Well, how do you specialize? First, you have to know your client your ideal client, and then you can build systems around that ideal client. You can market and message to that ideal client. So that's really one of those key things that you want to do. So those are just two of the five keys, right? Yeah. There are a couple of other keys, and I don't want to just yammer all day. I, you know, you can always download the book. <laughs> it's on my website, uh, nlbusinessadvisors.com, and uh, it's a page, e-guide, five keys, and it'll give you the other keys that are available to you. Um, so take advantage of that. Uh, it, it's free. It's, and it's a quick read, maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put that down below or up below or wherever it goes. Uh, there'll be a link somewhere. <laughs> in the cloud and the ether. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's so interesting, Mark, when you, when you talk about niches, and I think that's something that so often gets ignored, but yet we kind of fundamentally understand niches, but a lot of business owners forget how important that is. And what do I mean by you fundamentally understand niches? Well, when I have a tooth problem, I don't show up at the auto mechanic. I go to someone who's been trained to work on teeth. When I you know, need some electronics, I don't show up at the grocery store. I show up at a 
electronics store, right? I, I show up where the experts are and we see it in medical, right? Even within it, within dentistry, you've got different specialties. Within medicine, you've got different specialties. But so Absolutely. often when it comes to service-based businesses, you're like, I'll work with anyone who comes in. Like, yes. and, and that's such a mistake that, that you make when you do that because you have to relearn everything every single time every single you get time. on a new client instead Absolutely. of really going deep and being able to have a major impact for who Absolutely. you serve. And so, so thank you for, for bringing the niches up, right? That's so important. Oh, and, thank you. It's one of those things that I learned from myself, you know? Yeah. I used to always say, you know, when they say, who's your client? Whoever has money. If you could pay me, I could. <laughs> but I, I learned very quickly that that meant learning a new tactic or a new, a new tip, or just a new system for this specific client and that I didn't use it ever again. So I spent a lot of time and effort on things that weren't in my primary focus. And then you get dispersed as far as what you can do and you lose. So niches, you're right. It's, it's critical to business success. Yeah. Now, right, as a business owner listening to this, you may be wondering, right, this is a lot of stuff to do. You've already got a lot of stuff on your plate. And so how do you get started? What would your advice be, Mark, to, to someone who's saying, all right, you know what, I, the last quarter of the year is here. I am ready to start knowing my numbers. I, and I'm starting, right, and I want to start working on that guaranteeable business success. What's the first thing that you can do if you want to start down this path? It's um, important for anyone who wants to get a handle on things to just stop, just stop for a moment and, and, and reset. And then realize that the first thing that you need to do is to create a plan. So when I'm working with my business owners, no matter where we are in the stream of time, when I start with them, we're just going to stop and talk about what our goals are. We kind of redefine and reset what our vision of success is, really. You know, I, I always say when people start their business, they have these dreams of success, okay? and very quickly it turns into a nightmare, right? Because we start getting caught up in the day-to-day. -day. So I want to just stop and redefine your vision of success, and I think that every business owner needs to do that. And then when you have that clear vision of success, we talk about the things that are needed in order for that success to happen. Um, when I'm working with my clients, I create a, a plan, a three-year plan, a one-year plan, and 90-day goals. How can we get the next quarter in place so that you can reach your one-year goal? So it's having all of these disparate ideas, which are all important, prioritizing them, categorizing them, and saying, this is the one we're going to do first. This is the one I'm going to outsource. This is what I'm going to handle. This is what you're going to handle. And start to create this roadmap that takes you to your destination. Hmm. You know, one of my my own coaches, every coach has coaches, said, you know, you can go from New York, which is right where I'm around, I'm in New Jersey, to California, one of two ways. You can just get in a car, hit the highway, and start watching the sunset. You, you'll get to California eventually. Or you can actually create a map, find a map, map out your course, and get there a lot more directly. If you want to have success, you need a map. And that's what we work with owners to do. You know, we've actually created two 90-day programs to get people started. Uh, one of the programs that I think about with businesses that are up and running is the Ascent program. Uh, I, I think of business like in three phases, like a, a, a rocket, you know, there's a launch phase, then there's a, an ascent where you're going to a certain destination, and then an orbit phase. You're kind of like where you want to be and you're just keeping the machine running. Well, that ascent phase is a critical phase, right? So I'm helping people with this 90-day program to get their ascent appropriate. We do a workshop with them, and then we start to help them with a, a, a profitability and growth plan based on a strategy session. And we work with them in a systematic way to get that, to get them on the right track, to start meeting those goals towards your ultimate vision of success. Excellent. You know, I, I want to actually pull back a little, because you mentioned, I, I love what you said, just stop and reset. Just, just take a moment, right? Right. And in, in redefine those goals and in, in reset. And in, in goals are kind of a funny thing, Mark, because I'm sure you hear goals just like this. I want to make more money. How, how, how good of a goal is that, Mark? It's a beautiful goal, and I can guarantee that you're going to make an extra nickel by tomorrow if you work with me. But that is very obtuse, isn't it? Uh, when we say reset and goals, you hit it on the head, Tim. It's about being very, very, very specific because specificity helps with measurability. So if we can be specific, now we can measure. And it doesn't mean... If, I'm sorry, you know, I talk a lot. <laughs> <So> we, <laughs> I apologize. But it doesn't mean that 
I, I've set this goal and now it's set in stone. It's the, it's the path, right? And it can change. When I started my business, I had very specific goals. They've evolved, they've grown, but you have to have something specific to, to shoot for. And then once you reach that goal, then you continue to redefine your goals or even your vision of success because it can change over time. But if you have nothing that's specific, I just want to make more money, you probably won't find satisfaction. Well, and that's really the, the role that you play as a coach is helping people define those clear goals. Because I know so often I haven't been able to define what I want. I kind of know it like looks like this, but I've had to work with, with coaches and mentors and, and my peers to really clarify it and write it out and figure out, okay, hey, here's the pain point that you're struggling with. And you know what? You think you actually just want to get all your data in QuickBooks, but really what your 90 day goal should be is to, you know, have a process in place so that you get reliable, regular financials delivered to you every 90 days in an understandable format, right? And so now we've got something you can measure, you can track, and you can say, hey, I achieved that or I didn't. But you've really got to work with people so that you get that feedback so that you can build those clarifiable goals. Absolutely. If you don't mind, I, a very quick one story. Oh, please. Uh, one, of my, one of my favorite clients, he is, it's a family-owned business, favorite of all time. We, we're talking about a three-year goal. And they do about $5 million a year. And I said, so what's your, what, where do you want to be in three years? He said, $10 million. I said, wow, you want to double. Okay. Why 10? Like that's, you know, he said, I, I I don't know. And I said, well, you have to have something in your mind. So he said, you know what? I want a million dollars for each family member. Five people in the family, I want everyone to have a million dollars. I said, well, what if I can get you seven million and you still get a million in the pocket? He said, that's fine too. <laughs> I said, so let's not talk about your goal being top line. Let's talk about your bottom line goal, your net income, because we can achieve success for you without necessarily going crazy increasing sales and simply increasing sales doesn't translate to 50 percent growth or 100 percent growth in sales is 100 percent net gain it's not that way right it's so what's your real goal what do you really want and then we build off of that so clearly defined goals i mean it's just that really highlighted to me when we were chatting about it about the value of sitting down resetting and saying what do i really want yeah and now we can work toward getting it and if you're struggling trying to figure out what your clear goals are and what they should look like and what you want them to look like, shoot Mark an email. He'll be happy to talk with you and kind of go through some of those things. Now, now, Mark, you touched on some of those programs that you have earlier, and you really do. You, you work with a handful of clients that you can have a major impact on. But one of the things I also really appreciate about you is you're an entrepreneur and you see opportunities to serve people, to share your knowledge with other people who may not be able to afford you or work with you one-on-one. -on -one. And, and those are some of the, the courses that you, you've built. And, and you talked about the Ascent program. What, what's the other one you have again? It's the launch program. Right? Okay. So very similar in nature, but the launch program is a little different because I think about business owners who are uh, maybe considering or I shouldn't say owners, but who have a concept and they want to go live. And I've met so many people who have a business idea and maybe they even have a plan or they've got an EIN or they register, but they never go live because obviously there's these inherent roadblocks to, to moving forward, right? We all have mindset challenges. I have my own, right? That I have to overcome to keep moving forward. So the launch program is something that I designed that prevents failure to launch. So in 90 days, I mean, your concept has to be sound. We want to be able to take you from your concept or wherever, wherever you are to going live in your business. That's, it's, you're like, <laughs> that's just very ambitious, right? <laughs> but it's possible, right? And what I like to do, again, I work with a subset of clients. It's not like millions of, I wish, millions of clients, right? But it's because I want to really focus and hone in. So if I don't think it's possible, I'm not going to even take you on. That's not fair. But if it's possible, if it's reasonable, then we map our plan out and we say, this is what we're going to do to go live in my business. And wow. you can do it. It's guaranteeable. Everything is guaranteeable. Yeah. If so, you do it the right way. So, so what would some of these businesses be, right? Thinking about our audience of, of, of dentists who, who are listening, right? If I'm a dental professional and I, you know, I want to, you know, I've got a specialty and I like teaching my CE courses, is, is building an online course and launching that in 90 days so that I can, you know, provide education to other dentists, would that be something good for this program? 
yeah, it could actually work. Um, I will be very, very honest. Building an online course is not as simple as it sounds, but if you have the head knowledge and you have the drive, why can't you go live in 90 days? Uh, the steps that we use to build online courses, and you can probably find them anywhere, right? You can probably Google build a course in 90 days and find it. The difference is without the accountability partner, we don't move forward, right? Without the timeline in place, we don't move forward. Reading a book that says I can do this and to this in 90 days doesn't mean that you're going to do it. Years ago, I used to be a computer programmer and they used to have these books. I forgot it was learning. It was a complete computer language in 21 days. I think that was the book, 21 days. I never learned a language in 21 days. I can't read straight for 21 days. But if I had someone who says, hey, you know what, this week we're going to do this and we're going to take this chunk this week. Went, well, now that's doable, right? So it's like eating the elephant in one bite at a time. It's possible to build an online course in 90 days. But you're going to need that partner to help you keep moving forward. Excellent. Well, what, what an exciting program for, for people to, to be able to take part in and for you to help coach them through this because that accountability piece is, is so huge. And I, I'll share my little public confession here, right? I, in the, in the pre COVID days, I'm a big fan of orange theory fitness. I, I love going to the gym. I love working out. Why? Because it's on my calendar. I've got an appointment. And if I don't show up, I get charged for not showing up. And you know what? I would show up. Amazing. All of a sudden, COVID hits, the gym shut down. How many times do you think I've gone out and exercised? <laughs> I haven't, right? It, 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 and so often as entrepreneurs, you as a business owner, right, you want to set up conditions around you to create those high performance states, to create that accountability, to create your momentum and to help you move forward even more. And, and once again, that's the role of a good coach, a good advisor, someone to help you make smart choices, both in your business and your life. And so, Mark, wow, what, what, what powerful stuff. What are some closing thoughts that, that you would leave us with? Well, you know, it's funny I, that you asked that question because I'm, I'm thinking about all these other things that I should be saying and that's intelligent, but I'm just going to keep it simple. It's something that I put in my ebook and I believe it. You know, they say that five out of 10 businesses fail in the first five years or it's actually maybe the first year. And then up the, the next five, it's another half of those. But that doesn't have to be you. Hmm. You know, success can be guaranteeable. Obviously, everybody's definition of success is different. But if you want to be successful in business, you can be successful in business. It takes certain things. It takes understanding some basic business fundamentals. It takes some uh, planning. It takes some accountability, but you can be successful in business. So if you are thinking about starting a business or if you have a business that's struggling, don't give up on it. Find the person that's going to help pull you through because success is guaranteeable. There's no way you can fail if you take the right steps. Wow. And we only know that because of social proof, right? Wow. There are other businesses out there who do exactly what you do, who make money. So why can't you? Why can't you be successful? Hmm. I'm going to close it with that because, again, I talk too much. <laughs> no, no you, you, you are delivering a ton of value and lots of knowledge to, to you and, and the listener out there. And I'm so happy you're, you're sharing this with everyone, Mark. It's, uh, it's so exciting to, to talk with you. And I, I know I'm certainly walking away with, with just even more confidence in, in building my business. You've certainly given me and the listener and, and you listening some ideas on, on how to improve our cash flow and, and that bottom line and, and, and knowing the difference between making more money and keeping more money. I want to keep more money, man. That's so, so powerful. And like I said, you're, you're leaving me excited about that business success being guaranteeable. If you follow some simple steps, it, it, you can really maximize your probability of achieving all that's important to you. And so Mark, thank you. Once again, how, how can we find you? How can we get in contact with you? How can I grab that, that ebook? Well, again, you can find me on nlbusinessadvisors.com. Uh, we have a contact page. Uh, you can email me at mark underscore adams and lbusinessadvisors.com. Uh, even my uh, parent company, because I own two companies, right? Mark underscore adams at mcataxprep.com. Either way, I'm going to respond because that's important. You can download our ebook at nlbusinessadvisors.com forward slash eguide five keys. 
Excellent. E-Guide well, 5 Keys. Well, excellent. Hey, Mark, thank you for being an amazing guest and sharing your knowledge with our audience of driven dentalpreneurs. I'm your host, Tim McNeely. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Dentalpreneur Advisors. You've learned a lot, a lot of great stuff today, but don't just listen to this, right? It's not enough to hear it. I want to encourage you to get out there and take some action based on what you heard. And if you do that, if you implement just one of these principles, there, there was so much knowledge given to you. If you just implement one of these things that Mark was talking about, you're going to make it a great day. I'm Tim McNeely, and I'm in your corner. We'll talk to you again soon.